Let's start with Member Center. Head over to developer.apple.com. Yes, we're introducing Swift. We know, we know. And on the bottom here, you can see the iOS Dev Center. Head over there. I'm already logged in here. And at the top right corner, you go to Certificates, Identifiers, and Profiles. And when you do that, you get this screen here for the selection iOS, Mac apps, Safari extensions. And what you're interested in is on the iOS apps, the identifiers. And this will show you all the app IDs. Don't worry if you went to another tab there. As long as you can find identifiers, app IDs, you're on the right track. So here are all my app IDs and the reverse domain notation here, the uh, app identifier. And I've already created mine here. This mine is called Buy Me. And if I click on that, I can see that Game Center and in-app purchase is enabled. iCloud, this is something uh, that we're not going to use here, so yours doesn't need to be enabled here. As soon as you create a new app ID, in-app purchase is automatically enabled. So all you need to do is create one with that little plus sign here. I'm not going to do that because I've got mine, but basically give it a name, something you can remember, put in the bundle ID, this needs to be unique, something like uh, com your domain your app and this is something you can copy and then you know remember that you have it hit continue and you know we went through this in, in the iCloud video so you know if you have any questions watch the beginning of that and that'll show you how to set up an app ID and a provisioning profile next up is iTunes Connect this is a similar thing uh, iTunes Connect .apple .com. log in with your developer ID and on this screen, under Manage Your Apps, if this is a new app ID you're setting up, click Add New App. If you want to add an in-app purchase to an existing app, just pick the app that you want to look at. So in my case, I already have one set up. Mine's called Buy Me, Testing In-App Purchases. There we go. So if you're setting this up for the first time, you'll see a screen similar to this that will prompt you to put in a description and specify an app logo and even specify screenshots. And all this needs to be set up before we can start creating our first in-app purchase. Don't worry about the upload binary button. We're not going to upload any code, but this needs to be set up on the system. So once you've done that, head back to app summary. And on the right hand side here, find the Manage In-App Purchases tab. Click that and you'll get a list of the in-app purchase products you've set up. I've already got a few, but I'm going to set up a brand new one for our testing exercise here. Top button here is Create New. And the first thing we can select is what type of in-app purchase you want to use. This explains it and you know probably what the different in-app purchase types are that you can have consumable is like coins in a game uh, you have to buy them over and over and they uh, usually don't expire but the game uses these things up could be I don't know a credit for a fax app for example uh, non-consumable that's what we're gonna do uh, that is you pay once and the purchase is valid kind of forever so that's usually implemented in apps that have a free and a pro version. If you want to unlock the pro version, it's a non-consumable and you pay once and you can restore that purchase on all your other devices and that's what we're going to do. Auto-renewable subscription, that's something like a newspaper, free subscription and non-renewing subscription. Those are kind of fall in this, into the same category. We're not going to be dealing with that. Non-consumable is what we're after. If you're implementing something that perishes while the user is using it in your app, then that's a consumable. So I'm using non-consumable here, and I can give it a reference name. So that's not the title, that's just for me a reference. So I'm going to call it screencast test. You can always, if you have questions, just click that little question mark here. Product ID, this is a little bit like what you use for your bundle ID. Usually, and you don't have to do it that way, but usually you follow this pattern that a com dot your, your domain dot your app dot your in app so 
the first part up until here is the same as your bundle ID. That's what the usual pattern is. And then followed by a dot and then followed by uniquely identifiable in-app purchase, which identifies this very product. So in my case, uh, that's not actually my product ID. Mine is com inverse Lewis buy me. And I'm going to call it dot screencast. I'm going to copy that so I can use it in Xcode in a moment. Pricing and availability, you have to uh, say yes, it's clear for sale, or no if you're not quite ready yet. Select the price tier, so you can go up to, you know, tier 87, which I think is $700 or something. If your app sells for that, congratulations. <laughs> you can, as of iOS 6, I believe, you can set up free in-app purchases as well. Uh, the good thing is that if you ever wanted to give your app away for free and it has an in-app purchase, then you know free is the way to go for a period of time to give that away to your users for free, or just select anything else. I'm going to select tier two here, and you get presented with how much that is in the different territories here. So tier two is one dollar ninety-nine, and in the UK is one pound forty-nine right now. And these prices fluctuate. Select it and. Then, have a look at the language tab here. You can select a language for each territory if you like, and then each territory's in-app purchase is displayed in a different language. So if you have a team of translators working here, this is, uh, this is a great way. We need one which is English, so let's add that. English is the default language. And this display name and the description, we're going to get that in our app once we connect to the App Store for the first time. We're going to set up this product request and that will send us the display name and the description per product. So I'm going to call mine screencast test. So whatever we're typing in here will appear in the app in our alert view. Rather than a test description like I'm doing here now, you should probably describe what this in-app purchase actually does. So for example, this will unlock the full version which will remove limitation X, Y, Z and will remove advertising, for example. Hit save. You can also choose to host content with Apple. We're not going to go through that procedure here, but just know that if you hit yes, you can host up to two gigabytes of a bundle or of a kind of a folder per in-app purchase with Apple. So you don't have to pay anyone for hosting. You don't have to mess with server architecture to get extra content, additional content into your app. Apple can host all that for you for free. Review notes is for the Apple review team. You can explain in detail what that in-app purchase does and perhaps even give them a test user and password so that they can test the in-app purchase at their end. I'm going to leave this blank for now. You get the drift here. And screenshot for review. So you have to have at least one screenshot. In the real world, this is going to demonstrate what your in-app purchase UI looks like. So grab a screen from your iPhone or your iPad as soon as your UI comes up that will ask this is the product, here are your purchase options. Apple want to see that. 